Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Project this time, earlier this year when I went to visit Wayne, he gave me this piece of oak, um, which is a fairly long plank, so I've cut it off for a piece that I wanted here and I've just took the corners out on the bandsaw just to make it a little bit easier. It's also got a bit of a bend in it, so this point here is actually a lot higher on this side, it sweeps down a bit. Uh, but because of the bark here, I'm actually going to make this the bottom to round it off. Probably put a mortise in the bottom to hold it onto the chuck. Now, I've been watching the Phil Wayne's videos lately, just trying to catch up on them. And so therefore, I'm going to do probably something similar to what he's done in the past. And I may well then get some of the colouring paints out and stuff like that to decorate the front, the top surface. Now, I've got this mounted on the lathe on a face plate. It's out of balance, so I can't put the speed up too high at the moment. That's the base done and you can really feel the tear out on there. So I'm going to get this sanded up now. Uh, I may well still do a bit of decoration or something on the bottom. Now I'm also going to power sand this for a change. So I'm just using my cordless drill with my bowl sander head on there. This has now been sanded to 240 and that's come up quite nice and just off camera I just took the top side edge off this so I could get it down to the level where it's going to be true. Now for the bottom here I'm just going to use my texture and tool just to put a bit of texture in the bottom here and a couple of places just to decorate it. I haven't used the texture and tool much before. I think the last project was the first time I've properly used it. So I am still trying to get to grips with this, decide where I want to put a line. That's nice there. Now I've just done my usual signature and dates on the bottom there and the wood type as I normally do. And I'll just give this a coat of sanding sealer now. And this is the part I love where you really see the colours come out.
Now I'll leave that to dry and normally I'd cut that back when it's dried but because I'm using Yorkshire grit there's no need to do that. I don't use this very often and I'm just making sure I rub this into the grain. I'm going to use wood wax 22 and then when that's set give that a coat of microcrystalline wax and you don't need to so I'm going to leave that about 15 minutes now, give it a second coat then leave that another 15 minutes, give it the microcrystalline whack. This has now had two coats of sanding sealer. I did sand it back after the first coat, but the second coat I've just left as it is. And my next job is to give this a coat of grey primer. And when that's dried, I want to give it a coat of white matte. you can clearly still see through there where the grain is um, and it's probably more the grey colour of the primer coming through. Now the next thing I'm going to do is something sort of similar to what Wayne has done and that I want to mask off some of these areas randomly. Now Wayne did his um, straight on the wood. I want to create sort of different size strips so I've got my knife and I don't know what this is going to work out like and I will place that randomly so I want to keep some of that really deep white there but same time have some of this across there Now, when doing this, I also just need to think about where I'm going to be cutting the bowl out. So the bowl is going to be just probably outside these screw holes. So the next thing I'm going to do is 
go and now spray that with some matte black paint. This is now touch dry. Now what I've done here, you can probably see I've got some boards up. I'm going to spin some this up with some paint on. Now what I've chosen is this PBO acrylic uh, phosphorant um, gel. It's a turquoise. Now I used this when I did my Christmas decorations back in December and it's really, really thick. So what I've done, I've actually just added water to it this time to really thin it down. And it is now a lot, lot thinner. So my plan here is, this may well run the moment I put it on, which I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm going to stick some blobs. I think I'm just going to start off with a couple first like that to see what it spins up like. And my lathe only goes at a minimum of 500 rpm so this might be too much uh, but I might need to speed it up a bit. So let's see what it does. Probably wants a bit more. Yeah, that's come out much better. So I'll add some more on there. And these inside the screw ones. So you can get Strophy, that's done some more. Yeah, that will do. This has now been left to dry about an hour, so it's fully dry now. And it doesn't show up very much in the dark. Uh, I don't even know whether you can actually see where I'll put this on here. So if I put the lights out, there's nothing actually there, but when I put the UV light on, hopefully you can see everywhere that that's lighting up. And it does, give a very subtle glow. Now I have a lot of that paint left over. Now I'm just going to go to my Joe Sonja paints. Wayne did a video recently, I think it was called Galaxies and Planets, and he did put down various iridescent paints and squished them around with a balloon, which made them look a bit like a nebula. Now what I'm going to do, because I think this certainly if it glows will give a nice subtle background and I'm not going to use a balloon I'm going to try with these little plastic bags which is what you get from when you buy pen kits and then I well, may well move the paint around and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some of this on here as a base and that is still very watery. I'm going to stick on a bit of blue in there so none of these are being watered down. Just a blob of blue in there. Oh, that's a bit much. A blob of violet. Just a small amount of red. And hopefully a small amount of gold. 
So I've got the four colours in there. And I'm just going to try and swirl these around. Now this paint is fairly dominant in there at the moment so hopefully these colours will come out a bit better. Now the colours on this are all dried. I did actually have to top this one up which was the second one and the other thing I found was when I was trying to dry this and I often use my air compressor to dry things off quicker because you just get that airflow over it which, which helps dry it. And because the, the paint was so thick in places, which was because of this glow-in-the-dark phosphorant paint, it's just blown it all and it's just made it a lot more even and given us more of a texture. So that's actually come out of a nice effect. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to give this spray a distance with a bit of white paint. And that's just so it gives it like a speckled starry effect. I don't know whether that shows in the camera now. We've got a really speckled effect. It looks more um, grey, full of stars and everything, which is more of what I wanted. The next job is to remove all of my strips. the white now. I was hoping it was going to show up a lot better being contrasting with the, the black. Now just to finish this off rather than just going over with a spray lacquer on there I want to give the edge because we've still got this grey white bit on the side here. What I'm going to do is use this gold gilt cream. I don't want it as a very precise circle or border on here like you would normally do if you put it on the lathe so i'm going to apply this with the kitchen towel now this is usually fairly thick and dry you can thin it down i'm just going to apply this like this sweeping it outwards so that i can cover up that edge without going down onto the wood. And that just gives more of a natural edge. So I don't like these white now. I'm just wondering if there's something I can do to tone it down a bit. And I think the white is just too bright as it is. Um, hasn't worked as well as I'd hope it would. And I, and I think I'd have probably been better off leaving that as wood. So to give that a bit of a different coloration, rather than just the gold, I've also got some silver. So I'm going to use a similar sort of method. I'm going to try here on the thicker parts first.
Uh, well, it certainly looks better than the white, but it does look a bit messy at the moment. And I'm just hoping that when I get a finish on this and turn out the centre, that it looks a little bit more pleasing. Well, given this a coat of spray lacquer, and I've got to say, I really don't like this. So before I go too far and hollow out the bowl, I'm going to let this dry and then cut the whole block back and then start over again as another project. Now the thing to me that has spoiled this, the white base coat paint to start with, with the stripes. And I think even if I'd left it as wood like Wayne did with his, I still don't think it would have had the effect that I was after because the where the black paint has gone on and all the other paints, you've got these really thick lines where the masking tape was but the lines just look too defined. And when I had that white on there, especially with all the other colors, it just doesn't suit. Then the next thing I don't like is that there's just too much white paint for the stars and it's just made it look very murky. Now I do like the actual gold board around the edge of the gold gilt cream. I think that sort of just encloses the whole thing. So hopefully next project you'll see me where I start off with effectively a blank canvas on there. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next project video.